because I'm digging my heels in whenever I ask this, but then yeah. the extra work. Oh, in Compre. Just kick him out. The system is distorted. Maybe maybe the tuition fees should just go up. Yeah, that makes sense. If you had more work, you did it. Actually, I think it's we should charge. Actually, it's very cleverly done sideways because that's better. I, I, See, this giant 65 volt. It's about to power a nuclear power station, that charger. All right, let me do my thing. Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, introduce things in the way and ask a few more. Two years ago, two years ago, we had the hood condensed magic in the city. And we held a one week here, and one week in France, so we made it the game of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're delighted to have Pascal here this week, and he's going to start off with his two talks. Uh, we'll talk about the fuel and the energy transport and superconductor in our own states. Merci, monsieur. And one hour plus 20. Merci beaucoup. So, so yeah, I just like to talk about some very different things. So first, we need to be very Want to leave me? <laughs> uh, hopefully, you may find it interesting. Uh, it's a book made of some collaboration. Uh, I've been working on my studies, and then we look at the long state into the mind. Aha. Okay. So, why do you want to look at bound state in superconductor? For example, let me go. This is a bit fine. The mercury in a in a superconductor is needed to make moment, and well, that's a very old problem. Why do you want to look at that? Well, there are many motivations. Wait. First, the third of activities yeah. that fit in the past year. Uh, the basic idea is to use the impurity of as a report we call. Uh, we learned something about the, the post, meaning the, the superconductors. There are also microscopic uh, uh, exchange energy that you can extract from these experiments. These experiments with like valium group. Uh, we use the uh, STM to extract the exchange, to measure the exchange and eventually control the exchange coating between uh, uh, some molecules, which has some iron atom, it's called the substrate, so they can force and manipulate uh, the exchange. It can be useful, you can also eventually uh, extract the spin of such as uh, magnet, and the uh, very recently, Resolution that they reach, you can really create the orbital of the uh, of the atoms. So you see, for example, it has a D wave shaft here, and so it's, and this has been done in two groups: one in the in Berlin, in the group of Katharina Franke, and uh, that one in uh, it's the Iker Bass group. So you can really image which orbital give rise to. To the scattering between the electrons of the host and uh, the impurity. So, well, uh, that's energy resource, special resource. Uh, you can also use this impurity, for example, to learn something about that correlation. Uh, Interplay between the conductivity and charges to weight. So, here they, they can show that uh, by looking at the impurity, uh, there was, I mean, there, there was some background in that system. So, that's uh, one of the motivations, but it's fair to say that was not the uh, Original one. Uh, there were this burst in, uh, in bond state in superconductors, I mean, well, goes back 10 years ago, which is well, one proposal to build uh, 
1D. 1D. Uh, the position super interface just by chains of my to the super -hunter. So as a new platform for my analytics. So we have this, uh, that was a theoretical proposal by Yanevik and Yazdani, where they have this uh, chain of, for example, iron atoms, and they do have some uh, helical spin texture here. And this helical spin texture would give rise to a uh, conjugal superconductivity. And very soon after this proposal, uh, we have seen this feature yes, many times. So that was uh, the experiment done by. Uh, by Yazani and Princeton, and here they have a, a iron, I mean, laid a wire of several uh, iron atoms on top of lead. And uh, well, so they have a very periodic wire, most, most likely to be on electrons. And they do observe uh, an, at one edge uh, of these wires of uh, zero bias peak, which was uh, Interpreted as a signature of myelina bound states. So that was uh, here we're sitting at zero energy, and that's the C directions. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, that's this spot here, here indicating C. <coughs> okay, this has been debated and reproduced by uh, many, many groups so far. At least here, a few. Uh, well, I think, I think it's a bit debated. We all know that's your necessary. Can, yeah, can yeah. I ask a question, please, just to stir things up? I mean, we know there's been a lot of scrutiny about some of these recent experiments on, on, on Majoranas. In, I, I don't remember, in this system, do they actually see two of them or just one? In that precise experiment, it doesn't. Uh, 14, no. Later on, it is. Okay. In the subsequent three, three years after the Okay, so that at least that is that, good. Are they correlated? I don't know. Okay, that, that was going to be my next question. Okay. So thank you. That, that is true. No. Okay, because that's what I remembered. It was just one. Right. Okay, but they did see two. They did see two. Okay, they have been repeated. You see, these are the same Princeton group. They repeated these experiments. They, do a, they did a, a spin result, STM, as a signature also. And that's another source of. Uh, but it's major. And uh, indeed, I think it's in that paper is easy to do. Okay, okay. Well, that's good. Ideally, if you want to switch off one, the other one will see that the rebel is being experimented. Okay, so zero by speed, you're very happy. Fake Shiba or fake whatever. I mean, I, I will let you know about that maybe later if I have some time. Uh, they, but, but, what, what I, I, I found that pretty great and nice. Uh, it, the previous samples were already set for uh, iron atoms, so you don't really control. You have many transverse channels. You don't really control the, the distance between uh, iron between the, the magnetic atoms. And they are well, it's strongly dissolved system, so we have lots of uh, peaks, forests of. So another strategy is a real, real space design by uh, atom manipulations. This is a strategy which has been followed, which is uh, has been formed by the Humble Group in Denver, where you really build a chain. Let's say your your system one by by one, and uh, so that's this cartoon. And then, and then ideally, you can solve the system between the Berkeley and uh, uh, your your Lego model. And uh, yeah, it's it's with, uh, with uh, diamond, with your, if you can look at diamonds before each edge, you can see the difference between the two. Uh, and but they have uh, also some theater, so that's all by SSP. You want each chain, but that uh, more recently, uh, still it's, it's better, it's improving, you have better control. Clearly, they can really prove they have a good control. Um, but okay, we are definitely. Uh, I, and there was this third proposal that you need to be arrayed by an external magnetic field uh, in plane. Well, to be maybe that's the next generation. Uh, what I found nice, I mean, this was restricted to 1D or I mean, local objects at least. You can even uh, uh, one build a full array, a 2D array of a um, 2D structure, and you do expect to have, uh, well, 2D topological superconductivity with uh, some Bayona H states running around the. Uh, some island, for example, and eventually, I mean, 
uh, what is pretty funny, you can reach uh, phase diagram is a function of the distance between the impurity and look at the, the energy of the bound states. And the, the, all this light here refers to I chunk. You know? So if you want to draw a painting, uh, you can see the like Shiva rays uh, and look at the chunk, but that's what it looks quite a modern art. So these are German phase. Uh, for example, as far as I remember, there was, they go up to a number of six. What it means, well, in realistic pictures, you will never reach that. And, uh, but essentially, it's due to the fact that these bound states are uh, strongly equalized in the long range. Okay, that's about the motivation. So uh, that's what I plan to cover today, most likely not. Uh, let's go back to first. Uh, let's, uh, let's be sure that we understand the Shiba physics to see only pretty well. That's, uh, and uh, that's a very bottom up approach. And then I will try to convince you that we can extract some nice physics, so uh, about whole frequency theory and uh, short homography. Um, so the, the basic uh, ingredients uh, I will put in that's uh, first as work as a mean field level. So I would assume my super gap in genius. So, so that's a book of the gen mean field description. And uh, that's uh, the way I will find my my, my, my main team. I will assume uh, to be by a classical speed. So locally, this is like a an easy kid. And uh, well, this, this is clearly a pair breaking uh, object. And uh, therefore, you will find uh, some bond states inside the gap. So uh, let me, uh, well, yesterday I'm mean, uh, listening to Elio, I kind of write a couple of slides, how to derive that. So I will uh, show how to derive these, uh, these couple of uh, bond states. Uh, I follow this, uh, this paper. So the problem we need to solve is very initially you need to well that's the whole whole the general Uh well you have uh, four I mean your because you have four components for your number sphere, two for spins and uh, two for particular whole space. So and uh, first you assume uh, well you describe your spin as a classical field. So that's it's easy to, to assume in the, the z directions. Uh, the z direction is just the diagonal in space. So basically, your four by four uh, uh, version Hamiltonian becomes a block diagonal in spin space. Very nice. So we get basically one for spin up and spin down. And uh, uh, it just it just not the bounds state equations. So, but it's, it's at this level, just finger back equations, and uh, that's what we need to solve. And uh, it turns out uh, to be a, a clever to write it that way. At the energy of your bond states, the your dispersion relations. And uh, so psi of L is a function of psi of zero, zero being the position in uh, Well, before you transform it, only the, the left hand side. So that's the equation you get. And you, and you draw the, the delta functions. And uh, then you just need to invert it. So you multiply by the inverse of this matrix. And you get the, an equation between the Fourier component of your bond state wave functions. And uh, your bond state will function at uh, position zero. So you threw out the K term, you have to do additional term in your uh, Sorry. Yes. Yeah. 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 Then the last term there. Yeah. You see, that's the solution. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But I can one pass. Uh, it does as an exercise. Yeah. You know, it's easy to restore it. Mm -hmm. it. It will modify the structure of the bond states. But uh, so that, then you are left with these equations. Good. So this is, uh, you see that, uh, so here I was here, you just uh, for each one, inverse for each transform, you get psi zero, which is the, at the position in uh, being, being a function of a, 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 it, itself. So for this solution, a determinant of one minus two to the integral to the second problem. Actually, these derivations, and we have Tons of possible direction that if you are interested in psi of air, so the, which uh, turns out to be what we are interested in here, uh, you will get the e to the k air here. 
So there will be some uh, PR, sorry, there will be some uh, uh, exponential dependence. Uh, then you are left with a uh, uh, size function size zero, but in between that is zero. Okay. Uh, then you, what you will do is you will uh, well, linear I have mentioned linear distribution relations and use the fact that uh, this integral of a P is like the integral of a psi P times the density of states, one of the psi P squared plus omega squared, so it's a Lorentzian. And you get pi minus zero, omega and omega is so delta squared minus D squared. So that uh, this assumes that we are looking at a bound state so with energy less than the gap. So, well, if you like this uh, linearization, then the, basically the equation you need to, to solve is just that one. So it's a matrix equation and uh, calculate the determinant of the side wave initiation and you find immediately uh, that these two solutions. That one um, minus that one minus one. Yes, yes, you are all right. And, and I can see that this is a sensible situation in certain limits. Yes, but there are all kinds of discussions that the oscillations of two pairs should be real to the something uh, so that the gap actually cross makes this two pairs. Yes, itself in particularly one dimensional structures. This is something I have to work oh. No, no, it's interior in there. So, what you're you asking the question is what uh, if now I want to incorporate some air dependency? Correct. That's the that you can. So, you see here, here I have some special dependence. Here I can restore my my, my special dependence, but I need a self consistent equation. It's an algebra approach uh, that has to be done very well. Yeah. You, yeah, usually I mean, there are ways to, to say something, okay. but uh, this is important for what you want to do. No, but uh, because it's actually not a small correction, right? Uh, I was very much surprised in it. Uh, locally, and um, let's say real, I would be really interested in the long range uh, aspect of the long states and long range okay. correction. Okay. Locally, it can be quite substantial. Mm -hmm. Look at the right hand. I mean, rapidly oscillates. No, no, no. I think it's a it depression of the, of the gap. And the oscillation is, uh, uh -huh. is included here. I mean, so what I did was you know, the, the, the two case oscillation you will see is included. And uh, uh, here I just calculate the position. I mean, wave function at the position of the inverted, but mm -hmm. I can calculate the wave function far away from the inverted. You will get the e to the power of k there. And there will be. Yeah, function. So you will see the oscillation is uh, what no, the inhomogeneity of the gap will well depend a little bit locally. Uh, pursuing a little bit the questions that uh, that was just started here, um, uh, Jurg, um uh this feedback effect presumably is very important in cases like, for example, nickel in the cuprates, which blasts. Uh, a hole in the superconductivity. Do these kinds of self-consistent methods describe that extreme case of, for example, nickel in the cuprates? Or does one there need to start thinking about something beyond just mean field self-consistency? The answer is no. I don't know. Uh, 10 from the person of the gap. Yes. Well, uh, but but mind, it's much more extreme. Nickel is probably the most extreme. It's like yes. a nuclear bomb uh, going uh, off in the superconductor. Energy. Right. And another case that, that these corrections may be very important is in the effect of putting uh, taking a spin out of a condo lattice, although it's not superconductivity. It's a similar kind of situation. And one of the long mysteries of spins Spin. in a condo lattice is that they don't seem to produce the unitary scattering that you might have expected based on simple arguments as a healing process uh, and so that's the other way it's that it's that unlike the nickel it actually seems to heal in a way that we don't fully understand 
So I just mentioned those as two connections with this thread. Yeah, this is beautiful though. It's got an appeal to it. Yeah, it's I agree. It's beautifully pedagogical. And uh, keep in mind that I'm making strong approximation from the horizon, classical speed, and that is. Yeah. 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 Nothing you can do. I mean, okay. So, uh, so what this uh, mean field description gives you? Typically, so let me. So first, it tells you that for alpha, which is dimensional smart curve, this is density of states times the exchange times the spin equal one. Then the zero is zero. So then you have this critical G J C here. So for the exchange being less than uh, JC, basically, it's, it's, this is the excitation energy from, from the ground state to the excited states. So the ground states at small j is, well, you have your classical spin, you have your groups, your group appearance is fine, and you can excite one by trapping, for example, one by breaking the group pair and uh, trapping one with spin. So that's the, what this excitation is Shiba. Yushiba with enough energy is about. However, at some point, so for alpha equal one, well, you have a change of the ground state. The ground state, that one, you really you better break the group pair and marry these two guys and send one uh, well, far away, and then you can excite it. So it's really a quantum phase transition with change of parity of the ground states. Here you break the group pair and the ground state. Okay, so and actually, uh, this, uh, this uh, quantum phase transitions uh, has been uh, recently uh, directly observed in, uh, in that experiment by the Katarina Franco group. Uh, that's the same picture I showed before. They were so they were able to control the exchange uh, coupling uh, between the, the iron atom and the surface. Uh, by pushing, so it's see it's unrolled, it's embedded in some molecules, and uh, so they were, they've been able to push that molecule on the substrate back and forth, and uh, they did. That's what they are they measure. So they they use the superconducting STM tip. So uh, well, that's the, the for data. It's two delta. So for them, it's the, the pair gap, and you can see that well, but. You've seen it reach if you decompose that would give zero of energy, and you see here and same thing the whole space. And this point corresponds to a uh, change uh, phase transitions. Okay, so if you if I would decompose the data, then I would see exactly uh, that uh, <coughs> things. And this is. Okay, that's the to the best of my mind, the first evidence uh, of this uh, exchange of uh, this quantum phase transitions by the clever control uh, of the exchange coupling between the current and the substrate. Uh, well, uh, some exercise you can play. That was an exercise uh, we gave to master students. And uh, can you extend that uh, to uh, well, no longer assume some constant density of states? Uh, but uh, nearby you have no singularity, so where you have a strongly uh, energy dependent density of states. And uh, well, we were initially motivated. I mean, these days we have a lot of uh, fun example with a sort of 2D superconductor with uh, where the Van Hoff singularity can, can be tuned. I have in mind uh, typically uh, our bilayers, I mean, twisted bilayers of uh, TMDs or of, of thing. So, uh, so the, what you can actually you can redo these calculations, take, taking into account the fact that uh, now you have an uh, energy dependent density of states which is uh, diverging, and that's the well, actually the, the Shiba bonds they keep the same form, and here there is both the J and the K, except now it's a uh, scaling function, uh, which is rather complicated and low energy. Mm -hmm. Conventional bonds are very big at the logs. And uh, for higher one of uh, singularity, you get some, uh, some exponents. So that's something you can work with analytically. Uh, physics wise, there is not much, uh, I mean, basically, the, 
you have a decrease of the coprivia uh, uh, JC compared to the, to the standard case. So what eventually you will be able to, man to manipulate is uh, to change uh, this critical temperature very uh, sharply. But in terms of spatial extent, all that, the physics is about the same. And what's the effect of the transfer of space components? Is it also successfully critical? Yeah, that's a very interesting inheritance. So. No, yeah, no, but if you want to. Oh, oh but that's a much more complicated, complicated problem. <laughs> um, let's see. The term is to take a small. No, I mean, yeah, you want to change quantum breaking, breaking plate, but. Well, and you have competitions between uh, that central problem. I don't think, uh, I don't know the answer. Uh, nobody knows. Uh, because you have a, yeah, you have a competition. I mean, first you need to go back to your condo in the margin of uh, mm -hmm. like, with an energy dependence of space. So it can be, well, the, the flow has been, uh, that has been worked in the, the, the normal case by the person. And then uh, you see the, I guess I uh, the, the superconductor on top, so you see, it's, a, it's, a, it's not an easy problem. Actually. I guess in the experiment, you don't have an infinite Ising and isotropy. Well, in most cases, yes. Actually, in this, uh, it's incorrect on top of the surface. You do have the risky moya and you have to string the out of plane. That's why, actually, I mean, the, the right question is for 15 years, we've been uh, completely negating quantum effect. Why it works so well? And I mean, quantitatively well. Yeah, the, the ninety percent answer is that you have a strong isotropy, and this classical description is is quite uh, adapted. Otherwise, there is no I mean, there is no reason for this very simplified to work. Uh, but, um, mm -hmm. Even that is quite correctly the wrong state. So, I mean, in, if you if you notice in all what I say, I mean. Uh, it predicts uh, the physics becomes completely independent of the sign of the coupling. Which, well, you know, that's in normal case, this is certainly not the case. Mm -hmm. So, it's, this description is a very uh, worse, it seems, because of the strong anisotropy. And uh, that's. Okay. Um, so, yeah, my main point was to. Uh, Tell you about some special features and uh, these oscillations. Uh, but I mean, we know that uh, that was a that was work on this by Rosinov using a, a scattering approach, and uh, he, he used completely different parameterizations. So the bound state energy of the of the Yoshiba Rosinov was parameterized as cosines of the difference of scattering phase shift plus for all spin minus for down spins and uh, uh, v is what I call K before, sorry, the potential scattering term, and J is the same. And you can work out the asymptotics of the Shiba wave function. That's what he did. I found. So the, you do find these oscillations, so that's the pillar oscillations. You do have an exponential decay uh, here, which basically the, the super, with the superconducting current length. Uh, you do have uh, some geometrical decay, uh, one over R in 3D and one over root R in 2D. And there is a dependence between the scattering phase shift here that that person determines. Okay, so can you prove that? And uh, well, people have tried. I mean, the first, uh, I mean, the first measure of the exponential dependence uh, was done uh, 25 years ago uh, by Gastani during his PhD. We had manganese or gadolinium atoms on top of niobium, and uh, basically the, the rules of the game: if you move uh, up to ten angstroms away from impurity, you, you don't measure anything. Same for gadolinium, and for silver, obviously there is no nothing. So it tells you that the wave function of the bound state is roughly at ten angstroms from impurities. So that's the, the picture was taken in mind. Uh, well, people have uh, worked out that this special dependence, and uh, typically uh, here, for manganese, it's about five tenants. So I would comment that. So, what my colleagues did is uh, to consider a 2D uh, Van der Waals superconductor, now we have D7 atoms, which is a well defined cap, okay, all that. That's the band structure. Here, you have uh, two bands and, uh, and several pockets. 
and that's what they measure. So this uh, this is your image here, your bound states. So you can uh, visualize this uh, flower, and eventually, if you zoom in, you see the, the interference patterns in there. And uh, that's the spatial resolution in terms of energy resolution. Uh, you have two peaks, big peak here, and they are almost located at zero. Look at that. Uh, what is quite remarkable, uh, the size, uh, about 20 millimeters. So, and before, it's about 10, about 5 to 10 angstrom. Uh, let's, uh, if you want to compare uh, in scale, yeah, that would be the, for example, a few angstroms, and it's about 20 uh, nanometers. So it's huge. It means uh, from here to, to the to the end of the of the, of the arms about uh, fifty atoms about. And uh, what is pretty nice, and uh, you can really see the oscillations of the wave function. So, so that's the the the, the, eye, the eye spot correspond to these uh, bound states, the electron part bound states. And behind it, well, there is another one which corresponds to the to the green one. And uh, the idea is, uh, can we understand uh, these oscillations? So that's the green one and the blue part. And you see that uh, in the extreme part, they are out of phase. Okay. And uh, actually, that's uh, that's pretty nice. Because uh, in the, these within of parameterizations, uh, the position of the of the, the peaks in energy is controlled by this difference of scattering phase. So the, the, the peaks they measure were at zero energy. So it means that the, the cosine is zero, so delta plus minus delta man is pi over two. Okay, so there is a pi over two difference between these uh, spin dependent phase shift. So there is a pi over two difference, so but what we measure is the square of the wave function, and it's the phase really the square root. So if you square it, you will have a pi difference in the density of rho plus and rho minus, and this is exactly what is out of phase, which is a uh, So you have a correspondence between the, the oscillations in world space and the position in energy. So basically, you can correlate. The position energy to the spatial oscillations. So, so I'm not sure it answers you, but at least they see this nice. Uh, this is the wave function. Now the question I mentioned was what if you get on that on the wave function? Yeah, I know, but that's that. Uh, yeah, like single I expect locally it can be strong, TMD. but uh, what you really need to push a uh, very large magnitude below, far beyond the typical, then you can get really. Switch off the gap. I think it's parametric, always more than the other over here. Also, the but strongest the amount of change. Sorry. So, so your, your model is radially symmetric, right? Hmm? Your model is radially symmetric and doesn't explain these fringes, these, these Why direct, you, this directional dependence in the experiment. Yeah, we get these uh, yes. oscillations. Thanks. Let's go. Uh, here, here we assume a symmetric model. And uh, we need to explain this anisotropy. Yeah, so, and actually, this anisotropy, that's the one I just showed you, but uh, uh, recently get the same uh, sample has been measured by the, the better energy resolution by some of my colleagues. And it gives you this six fold pattern. And, uh, and this anisotropy in real space, yeah, even on what you're considering, but it seems to be uh, very generic. And, uh, well, so my model indeed was uh, was enough. Does not explain the real space change, and uh, that's something we well we have been trying to understand. But there are two ways to do it. Uh, first, okay, just put side banding. It's a single particle. You just exact diagonalize and do it. They can really such things. You can this, but you won't really understand. Um, so we did some uh, different approach. So. How can we understand the shape? That is a problem. And uh, we, there was some work for 
in uh, yeah, in metals, which was done by the uh, in that paper, and they, they used the concept of uh, uh, quasi-particle focusings, and they were able to show using some subtle point approximations of the for the normal uh, metal normal state propagator that this anisotropy is due to the anisotropy of the Fermi surface. Well, that that gets. But uh, can we understand that more qualitatively? And that's something uh, uh, we did recently. And uh, all the anisotropy is actually not from the impurity as well, but it's due to, to the substrate. So to the proper, that's the, we, if you plug that, uh, um, well, that's the, the, the difference of density of states, which is related to the, this propagator. And that all the impurity is included in this D matrix here. And basically, you want to well uh, to look at that propagator. And what we did is for, for given directions r, what are the k that gives the highest uh, uh, contribution to these intervals? And that uh, well, <laughs> we are looking at complex subtle points. And uh, basically, you you have to pick up the, the k's. Is the largest contribution to this exponential. We have a few tricks between, but basically you can write in road space your propagator uh, in a, that way. As there is a geometry factor going to D, sorry, the geometry factor, the, the free factor, which depends on the angles, and the rest, just there is a, the oscillation part, which is the free depth, the 2KF like, that not becomes dependent on the positions. And the exponential decay. And we can estimate these uh, three uh, objects, so the green, the blue, and the orange one. And uh, it turns out that uh, the, the k that will contribute are the ones where the gradient of uh, the, where the gradient of the Fermi surface, so the velocity, Fermi surface velocity are parallel to pair. So, for example, in that case, here, you pick up a direction R and you look at the part of the Fermi surface whose gradient is parallel to R. So, that's the range of rows. These are the ones uh, which uh, will dominate the Fermi surface. And so, yeah, let me mention the three contributions. So, the oscillation part, so this is basically the K Fermi. So, that's the the decay part is this is a, the velocity divided, uh, so it's h bar v over delta. So that's the the current the current length of the superconductor, which may be. But the, the part that will be uh, dominating, so that's that part will depend on, on k, and the free factor will depend also on the uh, on the velocity. Then surface velocity, but this kappa here is the curvature. And this term, the curvature, the flatter the surface is, the largest part will contribute to the decay. So you can really pinpoint uh, which part of the Fermi surface will give you the largest in the by just uh, Well, that's, for example, and that's what we did. Uh, I have some cartoonish and simulation for simple. So here in that here it will be fully isotropic, and then it will be fully anisotropic to the <coughs> this uh, value of the chemical potential to be a star shape like with uh, four probes. Um, I have more than that, but you can really clearly understand that uh, which part will be the anisotropy. And uh, that's uh, what we did. We applied that to now the synonyms. It's not so easy. Because it's a multi pocket uh, Fermi surface, so there are intra pocket and inter pocket contribution, all that with difference. But you can really figure out, but this is just a subtle point approximation. And uh, we did that, that's what we have uh, for that's the analytical approximation. And we the type binding fit with uh, the just uh, uh, not the prefactors, but uh, just the exponential decay. And Works pretty well. So you see, it's, that's a work which is uh, Um I have more details, but really you have to. What are the 
three what are the fermi surface and isotropy the cut part that we can make um, well if you want to engineer your bond state actually that's a useful information presumably this is aligned with the crystal method but, um, does it match what's been observed in the SCN? Yes, yes. Uh, we, 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 no? oh, well, it's, it's, I can see the six yes, yes, yes. Is it actually a lot of Florian at the right? Yes, yes. We, we, we can we can we can better than that. Huh? Oh, no. Okay, okay. That's a new uh, discussion. Uh, the point is that it's side, side, and that uh, it's about 60 nanometers. So basically, this, fa this two factor here doesn't play much of Everything is included in the, in the prefactor A. So what we what we can reproduce, I think I have some data somewhere, and uh, we have the right orientations. And uh, in that case, can we quantitatively describe? Not really. And we really, we need a uh, well, yeah, it's much more difficult due to the band structure which is complicated. And okay, you also dissolve all that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the right orientation works well. Um, wow. Well, well. Okay. Uh, that's all. I mean, all that was to, to say that we have a pretty good understanding yeah. Yeah, of what's going on here. Yeah. And uh, now that you can do stuff, maybe I'll show you, I won't show you that. But instead, I'll uh, show you. Uh, this, uh, this part. So before it was to extract some uh, old frequency component, it's a long debate and we discuss that maybe. But they can. Uh, so all what I showed you before was uh, down, was uh, by measuring the density of states. So, but actually, uh, well, a priori, you want to probe bond state physics, and uh, yeah. there are different scattering processes which are involved. Uh, you bring your tip, you have some inelastic relaxation process, that's the one which actually dominates in STM. You send an electron that goes into the sample, but so it's purely inelastic. But you may also have Andrea scattering processes. So meaning if you bring it close enough to your impurity, uh, you send an electron and you get the whole bag. So following this trajectory of this address. And uh, one is it, and you need to bring your, your tip close enough to do this. So depending on the, you want to eventually to analyze which processes dominate, and uh, and in visualize can you extract some Andre process uh, by STM. Uh, so I mean evidence of Andre scattering processes have been done using conductance measurement by bringing this tip close and close enough using the same sum. Some people with an irony party embedded in uh, uh, filters, what, aromatic molecules. I don't know which one. So they, have, they found evidence of Andreev scattering. Uh, here, uh, can we get some insight from current knowledge? So what you ideally want uh, to resolve is measure the current current correlations. And uh, so we have the current. So this is the current minus the background current. And you quickly uh, you want to extract the, the panel factor, which is the ratio between S, the noise, and 2E times the average current. And uh, this is difficult, but uh, nowadays, I mean, uh, well, a few groups are able to measure the noise. And the noise is uh, what has been used in the past uh, to, for example, to evidence fractional charge and quantum effects. So here it can be very useful information uh, too. Uh, as I said, there are few uh, uh, scattering processes. If you are in the normal purely elastic particle process, uh, typically uh, then uh, the charge which is transfers E, and uh, often we I define this effective final factor as the S short noise divided by two E times the current, and two is E, so here S star is F. That's fine. Uh, for inelastic quasi particle, typically, I mean, you send an electron, but if this bond state is occupied, it has to wait. So, it gives you to a um, uh, Poissonian process with an F star less than one. And for the Andreev, typically, you send a, 
but this is equal to square root of 2e, and uh, the f star is much larger than 1. So you have different tuning process, and uh, which are between 1 and above 1. Uh, other source of noise? Yeah. Is the just that you would be in the limit in the previous one. The balance is the one which has uh, uh, the, the authority. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, we, so the question is actually in these two limits that we have, the one where the, the balance state has authority, so the excited state has authority. And balance well, you have change authority, but does it make any difference? I don't think it, um, it's a good point. It may. Uh, the, the final factor will be over the speed, I mean. Uh, Questions. You cannot you can, can extend it in other much more than you can get like the XM time. So it's in less. Uh we make a difference. I think there is another might uh I order process may might make a difference of I order most likely non measurable, but it can be I think it, it can be taken into account when you do to the idea of what process I suspect. Okay, uh, these are the data uh, which uh, were taken in my lab by the group of Rick Massey. So if you recognize this very obvious star shape. So this is the, the, the two peaks here, and this is the noise power. So the applant will correspond to f to the power one. So f star power one, and you see that the right on the ship uh, the ship bar resonance, you have the deviations which are about well, a few percent here. So here the the data are below, while here the data are above. And this is rather systematic observations. And if you want to plot directly the, the effective final factor, it's one, and you have about 20% deviations right at the position of the ship by resonance. Okay. Uh, in between, you don't have any signal. Uh, so basically, you have signal around the resonance, and uh, that's it. So, okay, can we understand that? And this, so they pick up different, I mean, I mean they pull four different uh, positions of the, the wave functions. And what they do observe is when the peak is higher, the, 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 the noise is below f equal one, while the other way around here. And this is the same bound states, and you can pop any other bound states. So you have uh, some big peak when the noise is reduced, small peak the noise enhanced. And you can probe different uh, ship bar states with opposite particle symmetry. You always observe this kind of behavior. And uh, well, this, so that's basically a summary of this data. Uh, or here's a big peak if you're reduction, but the same collection of data. And can we understand that? And uh, that's, uh, uh, so we put up a very simple model. We only retain the, the, the Shiba contribution to the transport. Uh, we assume that uh, only a local tuning of quasi particle from tip to, the, to, to sample. Uh, we neglect any uh, tip uh, modifications of the impurity. And uh, well, so basically, a very simple model. We have a very few number of parameters. Uh, the magnetic exchange coupling, the scalar potential, the position which you can frame in uh, these two by two spring uh, functions. So u and v are function of this alpha and beta. Uh, the position of the bound states is known. You need to assume some, uh, well, eventually some broadening uh, of these bound states, which is intrinsic, and temperature. So you have four parameters in temperature. Uh, there are many things you can extract. Well, the position, we know it perfectly. Uh, the, well, so you can calculate for the small mistakes the current and the noise. It looks uh, a bit ugly. You can uh, uh -huh. 
you can extract the Andreev contribution, the quasi-particle contribution, the term all over that. Uh, that's, uh, and eventually in some limits where the, the position of the bound state is larger than KVT, larger than the, the width, uh, what it can simplify the expression. So the rule of the game now is that, that all this parameter can be extracted uh, from the experiment. Uh, you can extract this U and V uh, from the normal conductance. And uh, so to do an isotropy eight of the peaks, uh, temperature is supposed to be known experimentally up to the end. So we have left with only single parameter, which is the intrinsic line width uh, of the resonance. And that's uh, uh, what we extract from there. So I'll so, uh, just take a bit of a sentence. Uh, we're to convert get it expression in the normal one and the like Yes, yes. So this thing will be more compressive effect and call to all the end. Well, just to get a sense of which which are our form do we have to look at look at in this uh long integration? Yeah, uh I mean long states. That's the yeah, that's the main answer number one. Uh, but is there anything behind the fact that this is a coherence state? Okay, yeah. uh, okay, that's the one. That's the part you're yeah. interested in. That's the. Can you just put one more time? That's the Andreev uh, yes. distribution. Green. And this would give you a final factor uh, 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 equal to two. Yes. And okay. this, uh, good point. This part is fully symmetric. Because you see, you mm -hmm. one. Yeah, get yeah. That's really symmetric. Independent of the A. So th that part will give you fully symmetric final factor, mm -hmm. while the, the inelastic part is inherently asymmetric. So thanks for asking. So, so that part will be fully symmetric. And um, so, well, you won't be surprised that there was a single part of P. So it's not as trivial as you may sound. You have a bond state which extends far away. You can measure the noise at, well, in all six branches of the bond state, of the same bond state. The peak will oscillate. So you can measure the noise I mean, as, as much as you want, the same for the same interval. And if my theory works, I mean, the intrinsic lifetime of this bond state should be the same. And uh, well, it's higher bars, but uh, it's quite remarkable that at the end we get line width about my one micro EV for position number one, position number two, and we need for several. So it seems to be consistent and safety. And um, uh, so to, to come back to the situation, why does the small speak give you the largest voice? Uh, first, what I would have expected for normal uh, Inelastic inverted f equal one. That's it. That's what I predict. It's not one. It's above one or below one, and it can go far above one. So above one, the only signature is Andreev processes. So they do have Andreev processes, and it turns out that the smallest peak gives you the largest contribution of noise is due to this Andreev peak. You send electrons. It has plenty of uh, well, uh, large larger contributions. For the old part. So that's the evacuation process, which is larger, and the other way around. So for the Andreev, you need to send an electron and to get the old back, you need substantial contributions. So it's, it works inversely. And uh, well, it's, it's pretty good agreement. Uh, and uh, this final factor above one tells you that first, we do have signature of coherent Andreev processes compared to. Far dominating single electron processes. And uh, what well, we do have this intensive lifetime, which is uh, one micro EV in terms of life uh, time scales about time seconds. So, well, that's bad news also. Intensive lifetime one and a second. If you want to build Majorana states, these are not known by me. I mean, that's pretty good news. Not, not a good news. So that's what we would be with these nodes. And I think for me, it's uh, well, I've been talking about one hour. You can eventually use this short noise tomography as a signature of my R0 states. Well, my R0 is perfectly symmetric, and I mean, well, that's 
too much material, sorry. But just hello for for my mana is one. Why can't the position on the beat? It stays one. So hmm. here I'm talking about short nodes to mobile space result, not contract in mesoscopic physics we do from the noise to nano object. Here you really at the atomic resolution. That's exciting. And uh, you will find that my ground state by essence, by constructions is particle symmetric. So the final factor is one whatever. And it, it will be extremely difficult to find a bound state, which is the final factor for one one all the way around. And I don't know any. You really need some strong fine tuning. So that's something we said in that, uh, in that, uh, in that paper. And we, we really compare it to Shiba bound state at zero energy, Andreev bound state at zero energy, quasi Majorana at zero energy, all that. At some point, they start to oscillate. It's easy. And I think uh, time to for me to stop. So it's single particle physics, but I find it cute. A lot of things in there. And uh, if you're interested in uh, more, I'm open for questions. But while well, all these works have been done with uh, nice colleagues, so some experiments were done in Paris by in the group of Christian Penn and Kovitchev. Some others were done in the lab. The noise were, was developed uh, by Frit Massé and uh, Marco Apuli and uh, postdocs and uh, students have been working on that in Germany. So the, the, the tomography of the shape of the mountain was worked on by Matteo de Molins, the noise uh, by Vivian Perrin and some uh, 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 Brazilian uh, visitor we had, and these are my permanents, which was also involved in part of this project. Thank you. Well, let's ask some questions. Let me let me start. I was um, I wanted to follow up on the um, the work on the Sheba states. Um, of course, as you rightly point out, this is a very old concept from the sixties, but it's wonderful to see it really being probed for the first time in STM in great precision. Um, one of the things that was discovered in the early seventies was that when you have a larger condo temperature, you can actually get a, a, a crossover from cheaper states to a condo effect coexisting with the superconductivity. But to my knowledge, that's never been looked at with STM. And so I, I think it would be very interesting to think about, I don't know whether you get a, 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 cerium, a cerium atom on the surface of niobium to still undergo a condo effect, uh, whether the coupling would be strong enough to do that. But I think it would be quite interesting if you could watch that crossover. Yes, but they were with, with what kind of atom? Do you remember? What kind of superconductor? Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. and What would also be interesting would be the possibility of a two channel condo effect uh, yeah, sure. in the background of a superconductor, because there have been suggestions. Uh, uh, my, my, my former colleague, Yashash Komijani, suggested that you might be able to see the Majorana fermion of the two channel condo effect uh, in a superconductor. Um, so, so, uh, so I, of course, that requires just the right crystal symmetry and everything that you need to make that work. Just, just, a, just a thought. Yeah. Oh, great. Good. Very interesting. You have a nice South American collaboration there. Brazilian, yeah, maybe. Premi? Yes, you, you told us about putting one impurity. What if I were put to put two impurities? How would that change things? I mean, I, well, in uh, that description, there would just be some interference pattern. 
Well, that's what I'm wondering. Is it just straight interference or is it more than that? I think uh, it is mostly straight interference. And maybe it's like a one more interaction. But if you could push it to the condo regime, you'd actually see resonances splitting and things like that. I just yeah. straight curling yeah. in. But the point for the condo, as I mentioned, this transistor plays an influence. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I see. Not too easy. Yeah. We need to keep this surface and not what you can play for. And your approach, person. Interesting how to spin one half of your team. That is actually exactly the yeah. question. How do you get this from an entropy if you spin one half? <laughs> I was going to ask if you can tell spin a half and spin seven halves. Right. Yeah. Or in fact, any Kramer's doublet should be pretty okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. you need to spin one half and that you need a good coupling with them. Yeah. But if you could make an alloy in which you, I don't know, lanthanum copper six with a bit of cerium in it or something like that, that might even be a superconductor lanthanum copper six, or just lant or just lanthanum with with cerium in it. That was the classic case of a superconductor with a conduit effect, a dilute amount of cerium in lanthanum. Might be possible to do it something really clean, cleanly. I mean, the physics and the physics is understood, and it's kind of decaying and larger than the gap or not. Right. I had another question about the, no the noise spectroscopy. Um, um, uh, it, I don't know if it's possible, but it would be very interesting if one could somehow uh, look at a non equilibrium state using the noise spectroscopy if you could for example have an atom that the interface between two metals and you could drive a voltage across it it'd be very interesting to be able to look at the noise in a non-equilibrium yeah. system uh, yeah, I mean, they are limited to what, 100 mega yeah yeah it's not it's very slow yeah very slow, very slow. Oh, you could still put a small voltage and start to look at what happens if you could ever see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these are the yes. Very easy to get from the field. It's microwave engineering. So, what if you can do it? It does not. Yes. So, it's pretty good understanding of your. Microwave dynamics mm -hmm. is what you think you measure. The part behind the where, where is that work actually being done? The, so, I mean, the noise work. So this, uh, this, the noise done in my in my lab. Yeah, I see. Uh, I, so Fikmasse was a pretty small sort of uh, students. Uh, I see. Which all, uh, I see. <laughs> and uh, this is also done uh, by another postdoc of students in the Netherlands. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know Milan. Okay, I see. Okay, it's not growing. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it's interesting because you can really relax. They could be the chart or camera. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you take impurities with a strong orbital character, yeah. I mean, how how would this, for example, I mean, you 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 uh, show that to some extent you can use uh, your your oscillations as some diagnostic tool about features of phone surfaces and so on. Um, let's it's say you have have multiple pockets so it could only be a particular orbital character. Um, can you somehow uh, learn something about that by saying the different types yeah. of impurities? That's, yes, certainly that's what it's, it's not so easy, but that's a, that's a plan. Uh, I 
it's not, I mean, it's not a one to one correspondence. There is a sign. As I said, it's a multi pocket, there are many processes involved, there can be some time on them. And it turns out that behind that tree, it's not so easy to do this. So we may learn something by simulations in China from one type of impurity to the other and creating comparison correlations. It's doable. I'm not sure, I mean, I won't put my hand on that. You were to empty one of these bound states, I'm not sure if this is a sensible question. So, if you were to empty one of these bound states, what, what what's the time scale that governs uh, the restoration of? Yeah, it's when we have that experience about nine years ago. So the reef of this uh, this guy here. Yeah. And what goes into that? What determines that? Well, it's an elastic. Whatever, I have no idea. And quasi particle poison is shown on one. For us, it's just a technological parameter, but the, the, the dirtiness of it, but where it comes from, who knows? Uh, it's also Most likely, I would like you to guess, yes, quasi particle poison. But this is uh, what we're working with my kind of physics. It's in a way I'm not about. Uh, usually, uh, the main enemy is supposed to have a good bottom. Is it all good with the life stuff? Is there anything that I'm not going to stop? No, but, uh, but did I say that? I'm saying, I'm saying here I have a whole state that you understand. Yeah. And uh, if you want to engineer something, I mean, the picture phase of this one state, and this one state in Jerome is quite it's a familiar way. Uh, well, well, the structure is dirty, and that's, that's bad. So, I mean, if you want, if you want to engineer uh, just a chain of atoms as a platform for your line, people want to do that. So, just tell you, well, your basic building block, uh, you see, you imagine it's. Yeah, it's a cheap, uh, what, stable or that, but no. I'm just asking so, about the, something about the Lego piece. The world got to be dirty. That's my only message. Could you elaborate a little bit more, because it could be anywhere in the podcast, on your dream experiment to, uh, to use shot noise tomography to get a Majorana? I didn't understand. You you oh. create a bound state, but how do we know there is? Oh, well, 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 I don't know what we did. So, so, so what we did is the following: we consider a zero energy bound state. Yeah, uh, zero energy bound state is um, try by wave functions. Um, you can eventually you can already write the zero energy bound state as in terms of minor operators, it's gamma zero, gamma zero dagger, the different weight. And um, you can calculate uh, basically what we did. You can calculate the noise, so the current and the noise so the functions for these bound states. And what, did, what we found is that in these limits, um, large bias compared to the intrinsic width, so uh, the final factor is one plus some particle all asymmetry. So, it's a very simple expression, though the, the algebra is in the text pages. So that's something. So the final factor, yeah, if your bond state does not respect particle symmetry, respecting particle symmetry, you may expect some deviation from one. So what we did, we took bias is equal of zero bias weeks or models that did that is your bias peak and compute this final factor. So mm -hmm. um, the point is that for Majorana, I mean, it's intrinsic particular symmetry, and these things you have you see my point this in basically, and this will always be zero, whatever the position. But that's 
the whole wave function, which is part of all symmetrics, whatever its positions. <coughs> Why? Uh, if uh, you take what, what any other zero energy bound states, then you will start. You will start feeling that it's, a, like, it's some electronic character. Sometimes. And uh, we push it to the extreme. Uh, in the literature, there is this QM as quasi Majorana states. Basically, it's uh, you take an electron and you, by some clever fine tuning, you potentially split it like a Majorana. And you split it, split it, split it. So you have, you have an electron which is nearly equalized at some distance, basically. If you are careful enough to only call part of the two, it will mean it may have a one state. But if you move such a way you get yeah, by the other one, then you will start to see the other one. And that's uh, what, for example, you see. It's a bit, you did start to see the electronic character of the quasi major one. Uh, so what we're following with this final tomography is the particle all as it. So here, uh, Majorana is a fully particle old symmetric bound state. That's my only say. If psi diary equals psi, whatever the position, that's the only thing I say. And uh, the referee told me, well, there's nothing to do with topology. Yeah, there's nothing to do with topology. I'm not saying it's topologically protected in Majorana. I'm just saying that psi diary equals psi. Never say. Majorana never knows nothing about topology. You do have protecting my own and you have unprotected my own, which are the interesting one, protecting protecting one, but they do that. So if you're saying that there is a finite distance away, right? Then there would not be a zero energy in any year. So what is the qualitative difference from any other um, under your palm state. Good question. Uh, an injury for an injury for us. So that they are fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so if, if uh, actually, that's the other side. Look, look, you build a twice by one up, it's small only not enough. We're fine. fine. We do, we do. If you can make it always twice as hard as you just did, yes, uh, I'm fine. Okay, it would be topologic unprotecting, but it will do the, exactly the same job. So I'm very, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's perfect. Okay, in real life, that, that, from an engineering perspective, that's that's the job as well. I don't care about having a Z2 chain and protecting topologic and right or not. From an engineering perspective, that's the same job. It's like pretty good privacy. <laughs> in in. In, in on the World Wide Web. It's not perfect encryption, but it works well enough for, for banking. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my answer. Oh, but if you don't have topology, that's bad. Any more questions? Ah, oh, okay, new more. Uh. Let's see who it is. I'm getting there. The chat. And Piers, please mute his laptop. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Thanks, all right. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.